Hey guys, this is Devon here with netcodeguys.com. Today I'm going to touch on a variety of concepts for new and veteran teams who are looking for consistency and long-term One success. of the first things you're going to want to do on T side is to just work off of a default for a few weeks instead of scripting everything because you want to let your players think for themselves and it'll let you get a feel for how they like to play and what they're comfortable doing. So while you run a default, they'll show you how they like to play and you can kind of develop strats based on that and also put them in the correct roles they need to be in because obviously you don't want your halls guy on Inferno for him to be, you know, extra aggressive and give up early picks because obviously his job here is just to get information early on and give it to you and develop a plan from there. And you want your fraggers to be in more of an action based role up middle and, you know, execing on banana that the first guy's in, etc. like that. So, like I said early on, you don't want to script things, you want to let your players think for themselves and create their own boundaries. Another thing you can do is what I like to call CS chess, and it's essentially just understanding rotations. So in so Inferno, for example, you'll have a B guy, a B rotator, a rap player, a sight player, and a halls player. So if you get a pick at B, the B rotator will pick up B. You still have a rap guy, a sight guy, and a halls guy. If you get a pick rap, your sight guy stays the same, halls guy stays the same. Your B rotator picks up rap, and you have a B guy. So then, if you get a, if they if you get a pick halls, then you know you might have a guy sight guy picks up halls, rap guy picks up sight, rotator picks up rap. So it's not always going to play out like that, but essentially that's just going to be for Inferno. There's going to be the same people with the same amount of spots, and obviously the only guy fluctuating is the spawn rotator. So off of that, for example, if you're the guy that lurks up middle, there's no reason for you to lurk lane because this Hall's guy is never going to move from you know his position. He's the last guy to rotate, you know, if they take B. So when you lurk up mid, the side or the side you can expose is wrap side because the rotator is pulled off that way towards B. You can get a pick on Moto guy, or you can even lurk into spawn. Another thing is just being able to get on the same page with your team. It's obviously not going to be something that you know happens overnight. It's going to be throughout the course of playing together for a long time. And what you can do is just you know give your team a scenario. You know you get a pick here and go through the other players on your team, see what they want to do. Obviously, it's not always going to be the same, and there is a wrong way to play CS, but there's not just one right way. There's a lot of different recipes for success. And once you, you know, go across your team and figure out how they decide they want to play the round, you can come up with like a calculated formula for your team and how you're going to play the round. Because you don't want people reacting differently off of things. You don't want to get a pick halls and this guy to think that you guys should, you know, rush and just take the site. Because if he's rushing by himself, you know, and then he has a bedroom guy here who thinks that, you know, you should play the round passive and let them push into you. Then obviously this guy's just going to rush out and die by himself and there's going to be no trade kill. And the pick that you guys got just goes wasted. One of the really crucial aspects in CS to me is learning how to lose. And that goes for a variety of areas. Whether it be having a teammate who makes excuses for everything when he dies or you guys lose. Instead of figuring out the root of the problem and you know getting better from there. Or going over a strat in practice, having it not work and just saying it doesn't work instead of trying to figure out why it doesn't work. And the big thing for that is just improving as a team through those experiences. And that's also through winning as well. You want to be a good winner. You don't want to just win and not look back on the demo or, you know, whatever, and just see why you won. Because maybe there was rounds that you can get better at and improve on in the future that are already good. And maybe there's rounds that you won that maybe you shouldn't have and you didn't notice that while it was going on. So just a big thing in, in this game is just, you know, to be able to be humble and be a good winner, but also be a good To loser. piggyback on that and also to bring up something that's almost equally as important is understanding numbers and how important they are. So for example, if you're the rap guy, you have to be almost content just dealing damage instead of getting kills because you're getting information, falling back, and your rap guy from B rotating is coming back to help you while you, you know, fall back moto pit. But the main thing is like, okay, so when you get a kill in middle or just in general on any map, you want to understand that if you fall back, it gives your team numbers. Even if you have four health, it's someone else the other team has to account for when they're taking a site or formulating another plan. And also, you can, in this game, there's just so many spots you can get in that can get you a cheap kill or information, and you can let your teammates get kills off of you by just going into a site first and letting your teammates trade. So hopefully at least some of that information will give you a different perception on CS and allow that to apply it to your team to come up with realistic goals for yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. This has been Deborah with netcodeguys.com, and I hope you learned something.